Hi learners, you're welcome to our eighth lesson in integrated science. I hope you are doing well and you are watching the previous videos. Watching the previous videos put you in a better position to understand upcoming videos. Today, we are still looking at systems and the unit is diffusion and osmosis. Last time under osmosis we looked at experiment to demonstrate osmosis in non-living tissue. Today we are started to demonstrate osmosis in living tissue. Demonstrate osmosis in living tissue. Remember we said osmosis is the movement of water molecules from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration across a semi-permeable membrane. All right. Now, for this experiment, the title is An Experiment to Demonstrate Osmosis in a living tissue. An experiment to demonstrate osmosis in a living tissue. So what is the aim? The aim is to demonstrate osmosis in a living tissue. That will be our aim. Okay. The materials we need, we have tuber of fresh potato, you can choose yam or unripe or pork. We need a water trough, a container containing water, then we need a knife for the peeling, and then we need strong salt solution or concentrated salt solution, and of course we need boiled potato. Now let's look at it. First diagram consisting of living potato, fresh potato. This is the beginning of the experiment, this is the end of the experiment. And this is boiled potato. Now, in the water trough is water, in the potato is strong salt solution. Now, this it's not a different potato, it's the same potato at the end of the experiment. This is how it appears. So now let's go through the procedure and study how um, the diagram is. Procedure. We are saying that two tubers of potato are peeled off, at least at the base and cavity or hole is created in each of them. One tube is bored. So we bore one tube to serve as a control experiment. Control experiment is an experiment which is directly manipulated or controlled to have only one variable or condition. What do I mean by this? By boiling the tube, we are removing one variable or one condition, and that is semi-permeable membrane. We want to remove the semi-permeability of the tube. So that's control experiment. It means we are manipulating, we are controlling this experiment. We are doing this to compare it with the actual experiment using the living yam. So it's control experiment is to compare with the actual experiment. I hope you understand. So we can see the differences. So now let's move on to the second procedure. The tubers are filled with strong salt solution. The tubers are filled with strong salt solution. So both of them. And then their level will be fixed with, with pins or will 
mark their levels with pins. So that if there's any change in the volume, we can easily see it. That's why we use a pin to mark the level in the potato. Then the next one we are seeing, the tubers are then placed in water trough containing what? Water. And left for eight hours. The tubers are placed in water troughs containing water and left for eight hours. Now, after eight hours, you see that the salt solution in the potato uh, rises while the level of the salt solution in the boiled potato remains the same. I repeat, the level of salt solution in the potato rises while the level of the salt solution in the boiled potato remains the same. Now, let's quickly check out. So as we are saying, this is the beginning of the experiment using fresh potato. This is another experiment called a control experiment using boiled potato. We are saying that at the end of the experiment, the source solution here, the level will increase. As you see, it is observed that the source solution will increase in volume while the water here will decrease. But in the board, you have the source solution level remains the same. So now let's get to the conclusion. We are saying the level of source solution in the living potato rises while the level of the source solution in the board potato remains the same. Now let's Check. In setup A, that is the first diagram, water moved from the water trough. That is a region of lower solute concentration into the salt solution, a region of higher solute concentration across the semi permeable potato wall. So that explains why the water level rose in the first diagram. Now, in the second diagram, that is setup B, water did not move into the potato. Why? Because its cells became impermeable through boiling. Let me repeat. The water did not enter into the potato because the cells became what? Impermeable through boiling. As soon as you boil the potato, you kill the cells and it's no longer semi-permeable. That's why the source solution in the second diagram did not rise. This is clear demonstration of osmosis in living tissue. Movement of water from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration across a semi permeable membrane. Now, the control experiment using a board that can be replaced with a situation where we make the concentration in the potato that is in the living tissue potato and then the one in the water trough the same we make the concentration the same for example pouring water in the trough and pouring water in the potato uh, hole that is making the concentration the same so in this case the control experiment we are uh, using only one variable and that one variable is semi permeable membrane we are ensuring that there is what semi permeable membrane but the concentration is, is different, it's the same in the potato and in the trough. I repeat, for you to get it clearer, I'm saying that the control experiment, instead of boiling the tube, you can pour water in the living tissue of potato and water in the trough so that the concentration will be the same. But remember, the cell will be semi permeable. In this case, to no movement will take place because the concentration gradient is the same. I hope you are getting it. So this is it. And uh, by way of summary, we touched on osmosis in living tissue. A continuation of the lesson seven: osmosis in non-living tissue.
And in this experiment, we made use of living potato tissue and boiled potato tissue. In the living potato tissue, we created cavity and poured concentrated soil solution. And then boiled potato tissue to cavity was created and the same volume of soil solution was poured into it. Now both tubers were then placed in separate water troughs and observed after eight hours. Now after eight hours, we observed that the strong solution in the uh, living potato tissue rules while the source solution in the board potato remained the same. And the conclusion, we concluded that in the living tissue, water moved from the water trough into the potato tissue, causing the rise in the strong solution. But in the second diagram, using the board potato, water did not move because the cells were killed. They became impermeable. They did not allow water to move. So this explains osmosis in living tissue. For our advanced learning, my dear learners, I expect you to read on applications of osmosis in plants and animals. Look at the difference between osmosis and diffusion and observe similarities between the osmosis and diffusion. And lastly, Steady application of osmosis and diffusion in our daily lives, in everyday activities. Okay, I wish you the best. Do the exercise in time. Present it for assessment. Till we meet again. Bye.